Hello everyone, this is a psychic reading on Stephen Greer and Michael Sala, and just kind of, you know, how they compare to each other, and kind of what their relationship is to each other. So, I started off uh, tuning into Stephen Greer, and I've already done this reading, so I'm just going over what came to me in meditation as I took notes, and I'm going through the notes now. So, <clears throat> what was first coming up for me was Stephen Greer working with his wife, and this being a very small organization that felt like home life. It felt very close to the heart, very much so, like like a project that someone would do from home. So that may already answer some questions that people may have about, you know, is he working for someone, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So continuing on. The way that I was seeing this was as if that was him and his wife, and then, sorry, noise, noise outside, that was branching out to a bunch of other, it was like I saw a whole bunch of different lines branching out to all these different people who are all in the public domain. And um, when I asked how was the government related to this, I saw the government up above, but there was no connection. So there was no connection of the government to these people in the public or him as far as the operation that he's... Um, performing here, which is, he calls it, the Disclosure Project. So, um, it feels like it's done from home, is the sense that I'm getting, and it's not being controlled by any sort of secret agenda. So, I heard the words, let me show you, and it was as if, um, for Stephen Greer, he wants to show people to things and everything needs to be documented to the point where he can literally show it to you. That seems to be a big deal for him. It seems that Stephen Greer has access to about one third of the info out there regarding ETs and so that's to say that there is a lot more area unexplored by Stephen Greer. However, I got that he is a very well-grounded individual. So, <clears throat> then I was tuning into Stephen Greer and Michael Sala, because they say very different things. Michael Sala talks about much more far out there concepts, including reptilians and things of that nature. While Stephen Greer says that reptilians are not real, and um, basically everything is just about the government and um, corporations not wanting to share secret technology with the rest of society because that would take us off of the, um, the carbon and the gas that, that runs the, um, the fuel that runs the world because if we didn't need it, then a lot of these rich people who make money off of it would no longer be rich. So that's what Stephen Greer says, <clears throat> just as a quick background. So how do they relate to each other? What I was seeing was Stephen Greer looks down and is put off at first by the presence of Michael Sala, but then there is a connection. So it was kind of like two stages. On a more abstract level and philosophical level, I see them getting along very well. I get the sense that uh, Stephen Greer is very friendly, but on a professional level, he is like looking down and kind of weary. And that was the, the image that I was seeing. It was like he's kind of just like looking down, kind of like just a little weary looking. <clears throat> I see them being able to kick it off at a barbecue type of event. So, you know, if they were hanging out at a barbecue, I think they'd get along. But not so much on a professional platform. 
Michael Solo seems very interested in Greer and his work. However, Greer is much more exclusive and only works with what he can verify and that which score corresponds with what he has already discovered to be true. Michael Sala has a... It was coming to me like he was like a wizard is, is kind of the energy, at least, to describe it. And it was as if he was in the sky. Um, and he was much bigger, like he was covering more ground. Which makes sense because he talks about more types of possibilities out there. Um, I was getting some of this seems to be true and some of it not. Um, Stephen Greer doesn't know everything, but he almost com but he's almost completely accurate, um, although he sees through a smaller scope. He is a little dismissive of some of the info, which seems simply beyond his his scope or his work. When I ask what Michael Sala is believing, he has a bigger scope. What, I, what, what he is believing that is not true, the image that I saw was someone with a needler gun. Um, that's a reference to the video game Halo. It's kind of like this big, almost absurd looking, like laser looking gun that it's almost like circular, tubular, that sticks out and then like goes under the hand. And um, so I saw something like that. And um, this person at war um, using advanced technology battling ETs. And um, I was getting the sense that this may be one example of a fake story that was based on other stories where someone's just kind of ripping off someone else's work and pretending to be authentic. So Michael Sola seems to be more kind of ethereal in the clouds about things but is also more inclusive and open to more possibilities. They are both legit is what I was getting. So both of them are totally legit but they come at it from opposite angles. In some way they contradict each other, but you could also say they balance each other out. I see Michael Sala working by himself, and he doesn't seem to have a team attached to him, unlike Stephen Greer, who seems to be working with lots of people. He seems to not be associated with any other groups or agendas working through him. So again, he's authentic. He's he's doing it for himself. He's, he doesn't have people telling him what to do. He doesn't have all the facts. Or sorry, he doesn't have all the fact checkers like Stephen Greer does, though. But um, seems to have information that Stephen Greer does not. Even if a large amount of the info is questionable, that is. Most of this information that may be incorrect info seems to come from individuals who are trying to make money for themselves. It does seem some of it is governmental psyops but not a large amount, and most of it is simply individuals mimicking other people's info for personal profit. I've been doing a lot of readings about this, actually, of individuals who seem to be fake. Um, and that's in my Patreon page. I'll talk about that at the end of this, though. I do see... Michael Sala being correct on some issues that Stephen Greer seems to dismiss. It does seem the idea that all ETs are positive for humans is not entirely true all the time. That's something Stephen Greer says that all ETs are positive um, or, you know, in the best interest for humans. I would agree that this statement is 
partially true or mostly true in the sense that you could say humans are generally good. Like if you meet a random person randomly somewhere in the world, anywhere in the world, they're usually going to be relatively good as opposed to evil, generally speaking. But obviously this is not always the case. <clears throat> so Stephen Greer seems to be a very happy person and he wants to share things with the world and improve society. He feels he can improve life. He would not do this unless he had evidence to back him up and by this I mean his work, and make him feel secure in what he is doing. He is family oriented, he seems very scientific and grounded within his work. There may be a slight narrative that he is pushing, but it is a narrative that is based in truth, and I believe that that has to do with what I was talking about earlier with saying that all ETs are positive that are on earth things feel slightly oversimplified but it also feels very much so based in truth and very wholesome he's a very wholesome person he is very kind and gentle some of his narrative may blind him a little bit but besides from that he seems very legit and a great and positive influence on earth so Michael Sala seems to be a bit lonely and maybe filling that gap of loneliness through his work, which many people do when they have a job. It's very common. He is searching for answers to find more meaning in his life. He may latch onto one story and move from one to the next, learning through this process. He seems to fully believe one story before learning to be wiser and moving to the next. Not always moving to the next because they're not all false, that's not what I'm trying to imply, just to clarify. In this way, he is not closed off to certain info, but is more faith-based, coming from the heart. He has learned to discriminate truth from fantasy through trial and error. This is a work in process, in progress, but he seems to be filtering through a lot of the BS. I do get the sense that some of the more far out there stories that Stephen Greer would call crazy can actually be true. I get that some of the stories about fear that um, maybe people who Michael Saul works with who have who he's interviewed may be pushing as being false so there could be some false fear out there I do see there being um, true stories of aliens working with humans to battle other aliens which um, Stephen Greer would dismiss but overall Stephen Greer is correct about there being fake stories to make people afraid of ETs this is not always the case, but it seems true more of the time than not that, um, generally speaking, the stories that are making people very fearful of ETs overall are generally less true than stories that promote contact with ETs. So um, I've been doing a ton of readings on like secret space program members, SSP as it's called, and um, just all types of different people like that. And you can find all of that on my Patreon page because a lot of it gets a little out there. And I also don't like to say too much negative stuff about people who I find to be frauds 
publicly at least. So if you do want access to that information, you can check that out on my Patreon. I will post a link below this video, so be sure to check that out. And by the way, if you watch this video all the way to this moment, give this video a thumbs up. I always appreciate that for all the work that it takes for me to do these readings and put it out there and share it with you all for free. So if you would like to join my Patreon member, I'd, I've been doing readings on like Stuart Swordlow. That one was very interesting. Some of these have yet to come out, but um, I'm in the process of posting them. I've done a reading on Megan Rose a long time ago and Elena Danon as well. Um, there are some readings. Oh, Eric Adamo, a, um, he, he claims to be a um, super soldier. There's also readings coming out for Jimmy Payne and Randy Kramer from Cosmic Disclosure. Those are very um, interesting, very controversial. I'm not going to talk about them here, but it's only $5 to join my uh, Patreon page if you would like to join. I also have a lot of videos about people like Elon Musk, politicians, and uh, many more and you can find all of these readings I've done in the past by searching in the search bar if you would like to find those. So um, that's all I have to say for now. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet for monthly predictions each month and more readings of a similar nature. Again, give this video a thumbs up if you haven't yet. I appreciate that. Thank you for watching and have a great day.